Hello folks, welcome back to my workshop where all the mess is pushed just outside of camera frame and I have no idea what I'm doing. Now, this is not mine. This actually belongs to BC Hobbies, the hobby shop where I work. This is a used Bachman Daylight 484 that we got in a while back and somebody actually bought it and then brought it back the next day because it turns out these little wires were broken or on the verge of breaking. You can probably guess with that being the case, it does not run. I volunteered to take this home and see what I could do with it and maybe squeeze a little bit of YouTube content out of it while I was at it. Now, the correct way to fix this and the way that I recommend all of you fix this if it happens to you is to order a new wiring harness from the Bachman Parts Department, take the old one out and solder the new one in. However, since this isn't my engine, I'm not gonna spend any money on it nor am I gonna wait for shipping from the Bachman Parts Department. So instead, I'm gonna embark on a very ill-advised endeavor and try to fix the existing wiring harness. This is a particularly bad case because it's not uncommon for these wires to break, but in this case, all four of them broke. So as you can see, this is a disembodied plug. There is no metal sticking out for us to solder onto, and we have no idea which wire is which. What we're gonna have to do is take the actual little metal contacts out of here, solder onto them individually, and then put them back in. So I've already removed the screw underneath right there, which is how you take these tenders apart. So we're gonna lift up the rear end and then slide it forward. And this is actually a factory DCC equipped engine, which means that it has Bachmann's absolute garbage DCC on board decoder in it. Now, if you look here, you can see all the little contacts on the board that those tiny little wires are attached to. The two center ones are marked M plus and M minus, which is pretty obviously the motor, but the rest of these, so L and R are usually the two rails, but we've got two marked L and R and L minus and, oh, wait, wait, wait. L plus and L minus R and L plus and L minus F. So that's front and rear light. So that still doesn't explain why we've got two. Oh, hold on. I can see a circuit board trace here. You probably can't see that on the camera, but those two are connected together and those two are connected together. Okay, that's good. That gives us something to go on. So these two are left rail. These two are right rail. These two are motor. Those two are rear light and these two are front light. Now, according to the internet, and by the internet, I mean some random person on a random forum from ages ago that I can't remember where I actually found this information. This tiny little plug is track power. And then here, the two inner ones are motor power and the two outer ones, I think, are the headlight. I'm not 100% sure on that. Before we get soldering, I'm gonna use a multimeter and trace these. Now, if your engine only has one of these broken off, obviously you won't have to do this, and I sincerely hope that that's the case, because this is gonna be a fairly tedious project. What I'm gonna do first, actually, is strip the ends of these wires. You have to be very delicate here, because you do not want to accidentally cut the wire. Actually, good idea to keep a pair of dull old clippers around for this purpose. As you can see from all the dents, these are extremely worn out. Now I'm gonna make at least a feeble attempt to twist the ends of these wires just so that all the strands don't go everywhere and end up having a bad haircut. This will make it easier to solder later. And finally, to make my job easier, I'm gonna tin the ends of these wires. One thing that I probably should have taken into account was that tinning these, the heat makes this, the insulation shrink back quite a bit. So you really don't need to strip that much off. The wire kind of strips itself once you start soldering on it. I, of course, forgot to take that into account and now I have these wires stripped way further than I needed them. All right, let's start tracing these wires. Here we have the cheapest multimeter that I could find on Amazon. So we're gonna turn this to continuity. And now if I put these together, It makes a nice irritating beeping sound. So first of all, let's find out if this tiny little plug is in fact track power or if the internet was wrong about something. It is that, aha, uh -huh. that's the right rail at least, left rail. Yep, this is track power, which leads me to believe that maybe that random person on that random forum was right. Having just taken a brief interlude to redo the Bachman factory's crappy soldering job, let's try this again. Maybe the two outside ones on the motor, I can't remember, okay, so. Other outside one is motor negative. Okay, so I was right about that, whoop de doo Okay, so I just misremembered it, that's all. The two outside ones are the motor, the two inside ones are the headlight. That means these are in the correct order, which saves me a great deal of trouble. And I've just noticed that one of the wires for the rear light broke off and the other one is just about to break off. So before I lose track of which one is which, I'm gonna solder those back on. All right, now comes the most useful tool of this whole project, the third hand. This one cost me a whopping $20. 
and it's basically just two alligator clips on some arms that you can reposition. This particular version with the screws and the wing nuts, these always get loose. They always need to be tightened down like crazy and it needs to be done constantly. So now, we need to extract the little tiny metal contacts from this little tiny plug. I'm gonna use this X-Acto knife. Now the blade is completely worn out, but that doesn't really matter. So all we're gonna do is reach in there, pry up the little plastic tab there. I don't know if you can see that, I'll have to zoom in on it. Um, and then, with that pried up, we should be able to push the contact out the back. And then grab it from the other end, and pull it out. That is the tiny little bit of trouble that has caused this whole mess. And now I'm gonna do that three more times. It's actually probably a pretty bad idea to be trying to hold this with my finger while I'm doing this, just in case the knife slips. But do as I say, not as I do, I guess. Also, if you're not quite as nearsighted as I am, you'll probably want to use a magnifying glass for this. All right, and now we have four tiny little things that will very easily get lost, but hopefully not. So if we look at one of these, you've got this end, which is where the wire goes, and this end, which is what goes over the pin in the socket. And you gotta make sure to keep those ends straight, because if you solder something onto the wrong end, you will never be able to get all the solder off. And we don't have any extras of these. Are you good at not losing tiny things? Because I'm not, this is gonna be a nightmare. But what we've done here is we've got this mounted in one of the alligator clips. I'm gonna tin it with just a little bit of solder. The key here is not to use any more solder then you absolutely have to. Matter of fact, I probably should have gotten a finer soldering iron tip for this. Honestly, that's probably enough, but I'm gonna do just a little bit more. Okay, so there's a piece of wire insulation in there that's getting a little bit in the way. Let me see if I can dig that out with the knife. This is like being a dentist for spiders. I cannot overstate how tiny everything we're working with here is. There we go. Doing this off camera because I don't feel like moving the camera again. But I'm actually going to shorten all these wires that I stripped because I ended up stripping too much off. Now comes the fun part. We have our tinned wire end positioned right up against the soldered side of this and you want to make sure that you solder the correct side so that it still has room to actually fit back into the little slot in the plastic plug. And we're going to put a little tiny bit of tension on these so that these things press together, just so that we're not trying to position it by hand while we're soldering it. There we go. Now, the actual process of soldering one of these should happen almost instantly. We should barely need to add in there. And there we go. That's, that's all there is to it. Do not want to add any more solder than that. I'm frankly, kind of amazed I pulled that off because I've never successfully done one this small before. Now we just got to do that three more times. And there you go. Sometimes you don't even have to add solder to the joint. There's enough there already. I'm inadvertently soldering the alligator clip a bit too. I just hope I don't, oops. Oh God, okay, that was way too much solder. I've just soldered this thing to the alligator clip. Well, that was something that I would not want to attempt again. And seriously, that was only the second one of these that I've done. Oh geez, I got two more to go. Is that it? That's the last one. Holy cow, that actually worked. That That is a precision on a level that I have not dealt with before. And man, it is frustrating, but it is rewarding to finish something like that. Now we get to put all these back into the little plastic plug. Please let this work, please let this work. That one's in. In some ways, this is almost more frustrating than soldering them. But, oh, there it goes, there it goes. Yes! Now, the final step is gonna be to put a little bit of glue on there for strain relief, which I actually also recommend doing with your new locomotives. But first, let's plug this in and see if it runs. Alrighty, it's on the layout, turning the power on now. Okay, no explosions, that's good. Let's go forward. Okay, that's reverse, but that's fine. Reverse, that's forward. But it does run, okay. Um, headlight, 
The headlight LED has fallen out of the headlight and is now down there in the steps. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> we may have to fix that because the headlight is not where it's supposed to be, but it runs. I've realized there's actually an even simpler solution than changing the settings. We literally just swap these two outside ones. Just pull them back out of the plug and put them in the other way around. All right, let's try this again. Forward is forward. Never mind the terrible Bachman decoder and its terrible slow speed start, but that is the next owner's problem to deal with. Reverse, let's try turning the light on. There we go, I soldered that up correctly, that's good. Turn this back up, let's back the engine up. And forward again. Oh right, we still need to move the headlight. Okay, let's take care of that. All right, now the final step before we move on to fixing the headlight is I'm gonna put a little bit of super glue on there to act as a strain relief. Now there are pros and cons to this. I don't recommend necessarily just doing this all the time willy-nilly. Uh, the main disadvantage is that if you do this, it'll be virtually impossible to do the same fix again. However, given that this does kind of make a mess of solder, um, I'm not sure doing the same fix again would really be feasible anyway. So I think I'm just going to do the future owner of this thing a favor and glue those so they don't have to worry about it quite so much. Now, that said, these will still be very fragile. That is just part of the territory with these little tiny plugs, but this should at least give them something of an advantage. All right, now let's unplug these one more time and then we'll take this engine apart and see what we can do about the headlight. I believe we've got a screw there. I really have no idea what I'm doing. I've never taken one of these apart before, but when I got this, um, all the screws in it were really loose, so I went through and tightened them all down, so I did get something of a feeling of where they are. Oh, hey, that was it. That was really the only screw. Holy cow. Oh, there's two missing right there. <laughs> so here we have the LED and I think it's supposed to go in there. Just need to guide it in. Perfect. And no, you know what I'm gonna do? Put a little bit of super glue on the LED itself. And then, and that should stay in place now. So now we just put this whole thing back together and remember to put a screw in one of those because that's concerning that that just fell right out. And also throw away this zip tie before it glues itself to my hand because it will. So in order to get that screw back in there, we are going to need a magnetic screwdriver. And this one is not magnetic. However, we can make it magnetic. Watch this. Magnet, screwdriver. Magnetic screwdriver. Why would they not put a screw in from the top? Like, I forget who it was. Was it Mantua that used to do that on all their engines or was it somebody else? It really doesn't like these sharp curves. It's not designed for them and I really don't blame it. Matter of fact, the front driver axle is actually derailed right now. Uh, let me see if I can just manually fix that. But there we have it. We have a running, oh, there it goes again. We have a running Southern Pacific GS4. That is amazing. We actually fixed this thing. I thought for sure, oop, thought for sure it was headed for the scrap heap, but nope, we have a living, breathing, derailing. Yeah, okay. You can't run these on 18 inch radius curves as it turns out, uh, which is why I am not buying this. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you find this useful. I hoped that you never have to do that, but you know that it's possible now and hopefully you have something of a guide on how you might want to go about it, should it ever become necessary. Anyway, folks, have a great one, and I will see you next time. And it already derailed.